valve train consists of the valve, the valve guide, the spring, the retainer that's on, located on top of the valve, the cross head, the cross head guide, the rocker arm, the push tube, and then the cam follower and camshaft. If any of these components have wear, the tolerance or clearance that is usually measured in this location will grow or be exaggerated. For instance, the nominal setting may be 27 thousandths of an inch between the rocker lever and the crosshead. When these components wear at any given point, that tolerance increases. And there is a minimum and maximum that that tolerance may be. For instance, if it's 27 thousandths is the nominal setting, the minimum that it may may be might be uh, 23 thousandths, and the maximum might be, say, 31 thousandths. So that's tolerable. If it's beyond those dimensions, then an adjustment needs to be made to put that back in its nominal setting. If you go through and you make the adjustment on the valve train, you'll need to bar or rotate the engine to set the engine in a, in a specific orientation to make the adjustment. When the adjustment is made, it's in a position where the valves will be closed and the rocker arm will be the furthest away from the crosshead. That is when you make that adjustment. The adjustment is made by loosening a lock nut, turning an adjustment screw, checking it with a feeler blade, and then locking down the lock nut. You go through and there are 12 on a, on a six cylinder engine. Normally there, are, there will be 12 rockers to be readjusted and you'll need to position the engine to make those adjustments. If you go through and you make those adjustments, and you restart the engine and the ticking is still there, then is when you'll need to stop the engine and check to see that the components that are all an integral part of the valve train, for instance, the cross head, the rocker lever, the push tube, the cam follower, and the camshaft, that their integrities are good. For instance, if the rocker or the crosshead is when it's sitting on that uh, guide pin, that it's not excessively worn, that it rocks a lot. It should, it should move, it needs to have clearance, but it should not rock. The same thing is true with the rocker lever. If you can twist it sideways excessively, then it's, it's worn and needs to be replaced. When it comes to a push tube or push rod, for instance, they can be bent or cracked. So if it's bent, it needs replacement. If, you, if it's cracked, some are welded. They have hardened ends on, on either end of the push tube. The push tube is like, say for instance, this pointer. There's a hardened surface here and a hardened surface on the bottom. And they're a lot of times fixed by a, a brazing or welding that can break. And then it can still set there and move up and down and it can cause or lend to a ticking noise on either end. So you would want to check that. Uh, when the camshaft, say for instance, the lobe, and if that lobe becomes worn or chunks are missing, then it can lend to that ticking noise. So then in that case, the camshaft would need to be replaced or the cam follower. At both ends of the cam follower, it's like a a rocker lever that's located or situated right on the camshaft. It has a roller, which is like a tire, which rolls on that elliptical portion of the camshaft, which makes that cam follower move up and down. There's, because it's like a tire, there's an axle that it rotates on, which is called a pin. If that pin is wore or if that roller is worn, there again is an excessive amount of clearance that can lend to the ticking noise. On the other end, it's just a socket where that, where that push tube set rests into. If, it, if that socket is worn, that can lend to that ticking noise. 
So if those components are, you know, found to be defective, they need to be replaced. If um, you've gone through and made the adjustments across all the valve train and the noise goes away, problem is solved. If, it, uh, if you start it up and the noise is still there, then is when you would check the cross heads, the push tubes to see if they're bent. The cam follower is a little bit harder because they're usually buried a little deeper in the engine, but you can take a mirror. Uh, sometimes you can take a little hook, for instance, on a, make a hook out of a hanger and pull on it and see if, it, uh, makes, if it's got any excessive play. But it can be done. And you can take a mirror and look down in there with a flashlight and see if you see any obvious wear. So the flow chart for the ticking noise on these two components that we just went over, when we go into the valve train, we're going to check and see if it's loose or out of spec. You'll have to check with manufacturers for those specifications. If it is loose, you'll need to adjust and see, then recheck to see if the noise is there. If the noise has gone away, the issue is resolved. If the noise is still present, then you want to check the valve train components. Those components we mentioned earlier, they are camshaft, cam follower, push rod, rocker arm, crosshead, valves, valve springs, uh, and valve retainers. If those components are in a failed state, then you'll want to replace, make adjustments, and it should, if the, noise, if the noise came from the valve train, should be corrected. If, there, if the noise is still present, then you want to go on to the injector train.